not far down to paradise At least it's not for me And if the wind is right You can sail away And find tranquility Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Never, never land No reason to pretend And if the wind is right You can find the joy Of innocence again Oh, the candles can do miracles Just you wait and see Believe me The reason we're doing this, uh, having this, making this videotape, is because the Buffalo Harbor Sailing Club has been in operation for 13 years, and it's grown from an original, uh, what, eight incorporators, several of whom we have here tonight, uh, to over 300 members. And a lot of people say, "Well, how did this club ever start? It's so successful." And there are a lot of stories, but nobody knows the. Uh, the full story, so we thought we'd get the original people here tonight and question them and let them talk. And I'd like to introduce uh, the people that are here and see the first president was Jerry Malahowski and he'll be joining us very shortly, but over to uh, my immediate right is Bob Eric, who is the uh, second honorary member of the club, made an honorary member in 1978 and of course we all know him as the skipper of the commune and our wonderful committee boat. Next is Steve Krasinski, who is an original incorporator and probably, uh, I think, the first racer also. You and Jerry them, and, yes. uh, and Brian Kane. Brian and Joe Barnhart from the Mary Hill, who I remember very well, is one of the very first uh, first racers and an incorporator. And Bernie Blum, who is also one of the first incorporators. Uh, 1977, Bernie, was mm -hmm. that, I think, the first. And Deneen Kuhn, who is uh, a member of the club and who is, the, we're working together on putting this project together. So let's start. We were talking first about the very, uh, very beginnings of the club, and not even of the club, but how did this racing start? And Steve, you seem to, to remember that story. Well, my best recollection was that uh, Jerry Malahowski approached me one, one day uh, and it had to be somewhere around 1974, based on what boat I owned at what time. I tell time in my sailing experiences by what boat I owned. It, as I recall, he, um, he had belonged to the Wilson Yacht Club for a few years, and, and they had Wednesday night racing, so he came down to bo a small boat harbor. Uh, the Erie Basin didn't exist, you know, and some of the other places we have now. Um, that's where we had our boats. Uh, he said that he enjoyed racing up there, and that was something we might enjoy here. And uh, I didn't have any idea, I mean, what he was talking about. Uh, none of us had ever raced. Uh, I don't think we had even seen much of racing. Uh, America's Cup wasn't anything like it is now, you know, on television and all. So, uh, but he talked me into to, uh, to racing between uh, the couple of the green cans out in front of the small boat harbor in that area. So it was uh, followed by the name of Ron Keynes with a shark. Jerry had a, uh, a Venture 17 and I had a 21 and and we uh, being reached back and forth and that was about it. It was there was nothing, you know. And then we went back and uh, chatted and all, and it seemed like a good idea. It wasn't all that bad. And then Joe had a boat down there uh, at that time and uh, we we talked and and he joined our group of, we were four then, so over that, it seems to me over that next winter we uh, alternated from house to house and formulated the club, uh, and then somehow that next year, I don't even, it, we met at Armando's at one point uh, across from the Ford stamping plant, right. but. That was a lot later. That was later. That, that might have been later. Years. I don't even worry. I, 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 re I remember when we first started the race, you know, it was you and I and uh, Jerry and Ron Keynes, and uh, I think there was another boat there, a homemade boat that somebody had built. And uh, we used to uh, go to the uh, desk there, and, and we'd pay a buck. Remember, we had to pay him a buck, 
and he used to go out and start us in that little in the in the little uh, rowboat or whatever he had. I had a Chris Ca uh, Chris Craft Capri. In fact, it's still racing in the fleet today. Uh, hey, Dick Smith's got Dick it. Smith has got it. Number yeah. ninety. I had it that time. Yeah. Did you give and yourself handicaps at that time when you were racing, or just boat for boat? No, no. God, we so didn't. We gave him a golf handicap. <laughs> well, there's no handicaps at all. At first, there weren't any. You know, no, we didn't have any handicaps. Them. We just went out there, and the guy put up a couple of flags, and we raced. And he we was in the small boat harbor, Joe. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was in the small boat harbor. So you race. What did you do? With it? When we raced, yeah. we just r raced around the buoys there and in, uh, inside the harbor, right, Steve? The Pretty black much band. behind the break wall. Yeah, and then we we kind of extended it. We got together and we said, well, let's go up this far and and go around this can and that and go around twice and and uh, we did things like that to make the races longer. We had no idea that that, no, we didn't that it had to be a, tri we <laughs> a triangle and there ought to be a weather leg and all that. <laughs> we had no idea. How long were your races, like 50, real short? Oh, yeah, because the, the longest one, would, like like Joe said, we were, we'd essentially beam reach back and forth down behind the break wall, so yeah. the, long, the guy with the longest boat won, and it'd be, be you know, someplace in front of the small boat harbor to, to the buoy out in front of the Erie Basin. Uh, of course, the Erie Basin Marina hadn't yet even been thought of being built, uh, and, and back, and that was it, you know, and then after a while, we became more adventurous, let's go out in the lake, you know. Right. We had heard about people who actually sailed out in the lake, and we thought, let's give that a try. I think it was uh, 74 when we actually started to race. And then se and then you raced 75 with five or six boats, the boats that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, gradually built. Yeah. But you met, actually, you, you started meeting during that winter, right after you, you had raced it? In our respective homes. Yeah. So you sort of thing. felt that you ought to have a club at that point? It seemed like this would, might be something other people would enjoy. I mean, I don't know that we aspired to anything. It was not like, we're going to make this, uh, you know, no. develop a big club and there's going to be hundreds of people. And it, was, it, was, and it wasn't like that at all. It was just a yeah. matter of something we saw some pleasure in doing with our boats. And, and um, maybe if we had more people, then it would be a little... Uh, There'd be more activity, uh, other, you know, and, and that type of somebody you know, else to beat. Somebody else to beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know guys. some of our first uh, meetings when we had about uh, 10 or 15 people. We said, boy, if we can only get 20 guys or 25, you know, we got it made. We'll have a club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we did, and then it kept growing and growing, as you well know. I said, uh, this is Jerry Mal Malahowski, who is the first president of the Buffalo River Sailing Club, Coming but we up. haven't even gotten to that part yet. We're okay. talking about the very early yeah. days of uh, when you all went out to race. Out in front of the tower at the Erie Marine Basin and having kind of a pre-race meeting. I think it was a sign posted and everybody who was interested in racing ought to get together. We didn't know anybody. We and I just showed up and they said, we're going to race. We, I think it was the first race, I think it was just about the end, I don't know, it was the end of the 77 season. But we ended up going out to Waverly and back. At that point, I think it was a Portsmouth handicap. Right. right. Yeah. And I don't know when that had, when that was instituted. But that, that, that? Let's get into that. I think uh, Bob Barnhart heard something about it, and he got an address and wrote for the information, and uh, uh, he brought it in, and and we kind of compared it with our own little, you know, kind of a, a system, and the. Uh, it was similar, but I think it was a little bit more, it was just one step closer to being a perf rating. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. As yeah. I recall, you had the three different uh, yeah. wind speeds. Yeah, there were, uh, here's, here's one race with the Portsmouth in 1978, a, a fleet list here. Uh, there was the ratings at 0 to 4, 4 to 12, and 12 to, what is that, 50? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Then were the uh, the ratings we, we got, them all. <laughs> and, and the idea was even in the uh, in the middle of the race, you know, if the wind died or picked up, they would go to these ratings, right? <laughs> Steve, I think you were doing really the race. Try to, and there's uh, a, yeah, identify the average wind velocity that evening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Take, take turns being committee. Are you there? Yeah, 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 there. yeah, there you are. Yeah, Jack Mathias. Uh, yeah. Uh, with Cannonball, but that right. was I think that was really when. 
things started to get a little more serious, yeah, and that's, that's when right. I did. Yeah. Let me see that image. Well, when you started the set, I mean, I, I'm still back at, at you sort of you, you raced in '74 very 74. informally around the cans, and then you you had meetings at, the, during that winter, and then you all came out again in '75 right. and started racing, still sort of inside the harbor. Right. In '75, I think we started reaching out uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. We were actually out in the lake. Uh, at that time, I remember we organized four committees. Yeah, yeah. Had that. Like, yeah. We, yeah, we yeah I think you got them there, committees. Steve. We had a race course committee, a yeah. rating committee. A race course yeah, committee. Right. I gave better copy of that. I think, yes. Yeah. And then how, do you, how many boats do you think you had at that time, in 75? In the teens, I believe. Really? I think it was about uh, 15, 20. Did people just come out to race? Just come out to race, or did they call you up, or how did they find out who you were? Well, all of a sudden they'd come on the course and uh, you know they'd they race. Show, uh, they, they didn't show have to. up. I don't know. We would. We would. We, talk, we talked to each. There were a few of us that knew each other with sailboats, and as soon as you've gotten maybe five or six people, one of those knew the other guy yeah. down at back and would chat with him and. And somebody might have a buddy who crew, you know, sailed with that guy, so that's his crew, you know. And, and word just spread, somewhat like the club has built now. Uh, Did anybody use spinnakers at that early? Oh no. So this was. It was oh no. It was that's very another, informal then. No members. We didn't own any. <laughs> but it wasn't a Did, did you have dues? Did you have any dues? In no, I don't think there were dues. I think we, we if anything, we, we put a, a buck or two in a can just to pay Katana right. to meet a committee boat. Yeah. That was about it. But I can recall, here's something that's, and this is quite a bit later, to give you an idea of due structure. December 8, 1977, uh, we have established committees. Uh, at this point in time, uh, Jerry was president, Tom Johnson vice president, Hank Rizzick secretary, and, and I was treasurer. But at the bottom, it struck me as to be real funny here because uh, single page of minutes, that's it. It says uh, full membership is $25 for the season, and partial payments are gladly accepted. <laughs> And we had an assist, uh, associate membership of $5. Uh, and the Burgee and the Incorporation, then, when did that come into play? Mm. Oh, Burgee, that, that was like, yeah, we had a couple yeah. meetings. Look at that. was tougher <laughs> than deciding to do anything else. Incorporating that, that took about a nanosecond. The Burgee, that took about five or ten meetings. Maybe it took the whole season. You know. We had people submitting uh, ideas that were just, it was incredible. More discussion. It was like this, uh, 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 all this publicity or this, this the stuff on the Thomas uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, <coughs> hearings. If you want to hear something real good, I should read this to you. It's one of the first uh, newsletters that went out, I think. And it was with our one of our early designs here. You can see it. And uh, Belay Sailors and Brethren of the Cloth. That's sail cloth. Yeah. And members of the Buffalo Harbor Sailing Club. Captain Bill Carey, as chairman of the nominating committee, summons all members to the annual election of Austin. So, so, so. And appointed uh, last meeting, uh, Captain Art Carey, Bob Barnett, and Dudley Buck. The meeting was held at Armando's at uh, December the 8th, 1977. Uh, uh, the meeting will be open for nominations to the floor, uh, elect president, vice president, and so forth. Um, Oh, there's a uh, following election will be some slides of the past year in a movie on the arrival and departure of the Christine Radish sailing vessel. Now here's something down here that Bill wrote. As a reminder, at the last meeting we discussed increasing the dues payable in installments to $25. The thought behind this was twofold. We would not have to collect more money during the season to operate. Two, we discussed incorporating, so see, and this was twofold. First, we would qualify for Lake Erie Racing, and second, when cruising, we could be accepted as a club concerning uh, accommodations where we may choose to stop and visit uh, to be discussed at the December 8th uh, meeting. Now, he, here, this was a thing, so he didn't have enough paper, so he wrote up here in the column, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear by the grapevine that some of, 
someone has found someone to take to make our burgee for about six bucks now all we have to do is adapt a one more at the meeting and that was when we had this one jerry remember that right you know it was the lighthouse and had uh, Buffalo Harbor sailing. Well, company. I noticed when I was looking through the old newsletters that the Burgee changed. Oh, yeah, time. it did. So, yeah. it, so did you vote on it? Did you, did well, you just yeah. try it out for the newsletters? or? This, then this oh, came up, one. you know. And then I remember that we we put this on to represent a sail, that slash line. Remember that? Yes. Guys, remember the slash line? Had something to do with a uh, with a sail plan. Yeah, with a sail was plan. That, uh, was it Tony Metcalf who came up with the idea? He came up from the bottom corner, and the buffalo was stuck in there. And I said, well, why don't we just take the stripe and take it from the top down? Yeah. Oh, and that's how it happened? Yeah, yeah. This, this, yeah. this is so a very, very, very poor illustration, yeah. but uh, just very, very uh, simply, the slash line across the, the typical burgee yeah. shape, and then later, to symbolize again the, the sail plan, and then later we added the buffalo. Uh, Do you remember that buffalo? But it took a while to get to that. As, yeah. as Joe says, there were, there were uh, at one point here we had, uh, we, we, <coughs> we thought we might use the, the lighthouse, China. Uh, the China light that's uh, uh, right out here at the Coast Guard base. And he's got BHSC there uh, showing alongside. So there was a lot of give and take before we finally settled on, on uh, the birds that yeah. we currently fly. You know something I remember about that? The first buffalo they put in here, they copied from the sabers. Now, if you ever look at that buffalo, he's got his legs bent back. He looks like he had broken legs. Remember that, Jerry? Like he's we said, that buffalo, we got to get a buffalo that looks like a buffalo <laughs> standing up, you know. So you and did somebody care. finally drew a buffalo. I don't know who it was. And that's the version we're using now, which is a nice Burgi. Yeah, you know, really? You guys did. After you finally got it going, yeah. I mean, it's lasted. It's really well, the original slash was to rep to let everybody know we were a sailing club, you know. But you did it by committee. You did yeah, it by pretty committee. much everybody had their input, you know. What so about the marks? What did you use for marks in those days? I mean, beyond the cans, the navigation, did you put in any marks? Why don't you tell well, them about the marks that we built? Yeah, there came, well, at, at one point we recognized that the government boys just didn't suit us. As we learned more about sailboat racing, we, we realized that the first leg ought to be a weather leg, and, and then the appropriate triangle uh, should follow. Um, and we, we found difficulty with the government marks. The wind didn't always come from the same direction as you would like it to, so, so we had to do some things. Uh, Ideally, would like to have put marks out every race. Uh, obviously, you, you don't have time in the evening to do that. So we opted for the second best alternative, and that was to uh, fabricate some stationary marks. And we, we had to seek permission from the uh, the Coast Guard. And the Corps of Engineers. And the Corps of Engineers, following all the... That's it. And we have all the documentation. Yeah, <laughs> Joe, look at Joe saved over the years. Shows the location of, of, uh, of the marks. Uh, I see Jerry's signature down there, and I think that was that five of the mark deal, wasn't it? One in the middle, and then right. three or four around, and we were going to start in the middle, and then we could race to uh, something like the uh, canoe club had mm -hmm. up there. You know? Exactly. And that's when we learned. That was our that was to keep a mark in Lake Erie. Yeah, that's what we learned. We could have something be gone. <laughs> and we we put these things together with uh, uh, ground tackle was uh, was rope. We used uh, nylon. And we thought we had sufficient weight down and all. And I can recall that particular year. I don't remember. It doesn't say when that was when we first initiated no, this. No, I know. It doesn't is say. There's no date on this thing? No, 77. April 77. 77. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Uh, July of that year, we must have had the most horrendous 4th of July. It was Sorry, a period of about, of about four days where it blew incessantly. Churn that lake up something awful. Wednesday night we went out and they were all gone. All and four marks. And we gone. had one of our best engineers at Mo design them, and he said, <laughs> "Fix it." Oh, these things will never. They'll last out there for a million years. They lasted one week, did they? <laughs> oh, no. And we built them at the plant too. We. T Wow. You built them at the plant. Yeah, right? over at Moog we wow. built them. And your lunch hour. Right. No, 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 no. I was <laughs> after hours. All the hours. All the gym. All the years. The it was a place to to gather to do the work. Yeah. But uh, so then we realized how ferocious Lake Erie can be, and then we we uh, we were more conservative in our next approach and and went with a. Uh, 
use of the government buoys and a, and a single mark that we put out to try and uh, create a uh, uh, triangle. And of course, it's, it's we still put one in essentially yeah. the, the same direction position. What were the marks made, made of? The first one. Well, those. Uh, they were stainless steel canisters. Oh, the they were all Freon cans. Yeah, what Freon they were. cans, yeah. That's part of the reason we worked at Moog. They, they, uh, they stainless had, they steel. Was, they they would discard these uh, stainless steel drums. Uh, so we obviously they wouldn't corrode, so they seemed like a good uh, building block uh, for, for that uh, purpose. And then we used some foam that we uh, bought, I can't recall where, and, and tube, uh, center uh, tube, that, and with weights on the bottom to keep the thing upright and all. Uh, but that was essentially it. I, I don't even recall what we used for, for ground tackle weight anymore, but uh, uh, they, they just didn't hold up. They, they were gone. So then we went with full chain, solid chain, heavy duty anchors, and. and Hi, Tom. Uh, Brake shoes. Now we have Tom Johnson. I guess Tom is the uh, second president of Buffalo Harbor Sailing Club. And Tom, we've discussed a lot of, about the beginning, so we want to get some of your your memories too. When did you first join the club? Do you remember that? Well, about the middle 70s, I think that was pretty much we, the time. You were one we were. of the first racers. Well, my dad and I were. My yeah. dad was one of the, you know, under his Never name, with his O'Day Mariner 19, mm -hmm. which was like our big hot boat at that time. Uh, some of the things I remember was that the, uh, the way that the whole club formed was very, very loose, and it sort of kept that way f till now, till the present day. I don't think there's a lot of uh, real tightness in the club as far as the the people involved in that, and I think that's probably one of the things that makes it such a neat club. And uh, everyone is allowed to do their own thing, and uh, I think our collisions and protests are probably down to a minimum. The, the thing about people in that, uh, we had some people come into the club, and we all remember who maybe the people were in the original part of it. But there was people like uh, Chuck Chilcott, and I don't want to embarrass Bob, but I think the days, uh, the day that the, those two gentlemen came into the club were, were great for us because Bob, for unknown reasons, always handled all the committee boat end of it. And Charlie, just uh, with his computer background, was very much a force in the club and, and is to this day. Did they have collisions and protests then when they started out? I can't remember too many collisions. No. Uh, protests, no. I don't think we knew what a protest no, was. <laughs> no. Just yell at each other, yeah, that's yeah. all. <laughs> hey, I you're think, not supposed I think to Bernie do. was the, uh, was he one of the original protest people? I that think was he was. Bernie was. I think let's, we, Tom's talking about breakthroughs for the club. One of the real breakthroughs was figuring out that we could put the committee boat behind the wall yeah. on windy, Wednesday nights <laughs> so that if it was windy, we could still run a series or we could still run a race because to send the committee boat on a really rough night, that was the thing, well, what do we do, what do we do? We finally answered, keep the committee boat behind the wall, start the race right. behind the wall. Was that with Bob in 78? That could have been right about that. That's Bob, do you remember? When was that, Bob? Uh, according to these sheets here, the first time I must have done it was in 76. Oh, oh my goodness. But that <laughs> didn't do it all the time, and that was just, I did it for Bill Carey and Bill Tran. Hey, Bill Tranchel got you out there too? Well, Bill Carey's There's boat was a little boat, and he said he has to start the races. It was on a Sunday then, too. Mm -hmm. They had Sunday races. And he said, would you take me out? And I didn't know what the hell they were doing. Mm -hmm. So I said, sure. So we went out, we anchored, and he did all the stuff, you know, the flags. Before you really came on board, what we used to do is... Uh, Everybody took a turn. Took a turn. Like, you'd go out there your night, and you'd start them, you know. And at this oh. point in time, yeah. it wasn't even a requirement that you have numbers on your sales or no. anything. We all knew each other. We all knew each other. You recognized... Wow. There were only... There, there weren't, I don't think they had a duplicate of any particular boat. No, I don't so think So it wasn't there was. a problem to identify the boats, you know. Here comes Joe Barnhart, okay, get his time. Okay, yeah, fine. I don't think there was two so boats then, the then same. So the committee house. boat were the people, they were then were the ones that, that uh, figured out the rating. The and, yeah. the, and, and But then they figured out the rating and said who won from the Portsmouth. Uh, yeah, well, we just go down to somebody's boat and whoever was the committee boat guy that night used his sailboat initially, and they just went back down and did it by hand. Oh, yeah. right. And uh, then hand calculator, somebody bought a calculator and that was pretty nice. And uh, 
somebody had a spinnaker, some a couple of boats. Didn't you have a spinnaker? I had one after a while. Yeah. I bought a Capri. Yeah, and, and uh, I had one. Portsmouth, yeah, that rule, that system attempted to to compensate boats for not having a spinnaker. Right. And uh, oftentimes our courses were never set up. Well, in '78 here we had spinnakers. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the right finally leg, we broke them down. No, I mean, I'm just looking at the boats. Yeah, but I don't think we broke them down in '78. That we used I know to we race. Had no. A and B, uh, A1, A2, and the B1, B2. Yeah. I got that. Yeah, that began to start. You know, we the the point that Tom made, I think, is what's coming out of this discussion. And and, and he said that the the power of this club uh, was the fact that it was open to suggestions. If something didn't seem to be working too awfully well, and somebody seemed to have a better idea, let's try that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Gee, we didn't know much about racing. Well, if somebody had a spinner who could use it, we tried to, to penalize him for that. We thought that would probably make his boat faster, and there was some attempt at penalizing that potential for speed, but we really didn't do it very well, or you know, and uh, and it maybe didn't work all that well. But we tried for a while, and then we recognized this isn't. There are people who are unhappy with that. And then somebody said, you know what, I heard about a system yeah. that might be better than that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually migrated to this perfect. And it's interesting, in 78 in the newsletter, it talks about a haul out race where you used the Portsmouth rule and used a perf rule for comparison. So yeah. you, were, you, were, you sort of scored both ways. Right. And then yeah. I guess during the winter, I mean, I'm just inferring, did you then decide to adopt perf? Because in 79 then, Tom, it was. It was that was, well, that's what we used. Yeah. Yeah. See, now, this meeting uh, that I have here, the 76 meeting, which I think was the first real organized meeting, you know, where we uh, uh, laid out uh, what you had to have, and uh, we had a race course committee, a rules committee, and uh, it's even here, the name of the club. We decided on the name of the club that night. Buffalo Harbor Sailing Club, 16 votes. Niagara Frontier Sailing Club, two votes. And Harbor Sailing Club, two votes. First, uh, when, when did you start becoming the official committee board? Uh, well, I just had a, a race result here on September 24th of 78. That's the Bob here, I guess, the committee boat. 78. Yeah. The, which would jive with the fact that you were made an honorary member in 78. Right. Probably. So that, that makes so that's that is. That's incredible, 13, what, 13 years. So for really from the beginning of the incorporation of the club then, all the way through, you've been the committee bus. Mm -hmm. Just about. We incorporated wow. in 78. We're still trying to figure that's out why. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. That's right, right, Bob? Oh, we love him. It's the money I made. That's yeah. cool. yeah, that'd be it. Yeah. That fuck a... That one, one, one dollar. dollar. That one dollar. Listen, that and nowadays it would be good. <laughs> yeah, now it would be bad, right? <coughs> was the first woman's race to stem off of this grouping? Like, did somebody's wife or somebody decide to start the woman's voting? Or? I don't know. Now, now you're, you're going to hit. I don't. You could look in the minute. Pretty minutes. much involved in that. How about Tom? So. Tom, it was during your your reign. Sort yeah, of. it started when I was Commodore, and I remember that the we had to make up fleet flags. Do you remember the fleet flags that we had? Uh, they were the first year. They were just sewn up. All the the wives got together and sewn them up. I think Pat was sort of leading that along, and then I know the last year I was in. We had a white flag with a picture of our lighthouse on it, and that was the, the flag that was used during the China Light. But that started out, uh, we were surprised, I think the men were surprised how many people were in that. I gotta watch myself with Anita in that nowadays, but mm -hmm. with how many women actually raced. And at that time it had to be a total female crew. You couldn't have any men on board. But you should remember, because I think you started. You were I did, one of the I, first. But I didn't yeah. start it. I just, you told me that there was a women's race on a Sunday afternoon, yeah. and I got together with some of my friends, and we went, and I was nervous. Because I was still with, with the Cal. So it, was, it, was a, it was. It was, 70, it was 79. I, I remember that. My wife raced in a few mm -hmm. races. But, uh, Tom, 
Okay. You could have. I so remember okay. I was down in the cab and yeah. sweating it out. You could have a man on but board, he had to be below deck. but he had to be right. below deck. He couldn't yeah. do it. He, yeah, he, he couldn't, couldn't do it. If you had a man, he had to be below deck. Yeah, and so I remember the, I was below decks a couple of times, sweating out my wife because you came about this close to somebody. You know. <laughs> but there, it says that there were 15 boats, and I do remember yeah. that there were, were yeah. quite a few boats. Yeah, we were. There. I remember we were surprised how many boats there were. And that was just the, the, in '79. I think there was just one race, yep. and then I think the next year is that. Then we went to Sunday after. We well, it was a Sunday right. afternoon, but then there were several. There were yeah. three, I think, on yeah. Sunday afternoon. There was one each uh, series. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's next what year. it was. Yeah. And they were always on Sundays. Was it part of China Light? I mean, was it did the, with the discussion the land acquisition and getting China Light have something to do with? I, I think the only we we had our beacon and the our lighthouse on the flag. I remember because I have the I have about two of those flags left. They were real neat flags. China Light evolved later on. That one was not called that originally. Um, the actual the talk about the land acquisition and the uh, the way the, the way I remember that that a committee was there was, we asked to, that a committee be formed to look for land. And there were two purposes that this committee was looking for land. One was to possibly have a clubhouse for the club. And the other one was to maybe get slips for uh, the club members. Now, that committee found the land where the China Light is right now. And Central had a, a, a number of uh, parcels of property in and around the, the Buffalo metropolitan Buffalo area that they, were, uh, they would like to sell. And one of them just happened to be on the uh, ship canal, Buffalo Ship Canal, mm -hmm. and I uh, wondered if, if that might not be a, a good thing to grab up him. Him having been, Bob having been a, a part of the, uh, the um, powerboat club, what do they call it? Motorboat club. Motorboat club, club. Yeah. Uh, the old, that Joe belonged to, uh, was probably, you know, dear in his mind that, uh, you know, that, that type of thing with the camaraderie and just to have a place of your own kind of thing, I guess, uh, it, it was secure. And that's, I, my recollection was that's the first I heard about uh, an actual piece of property. Mm -hmm. And then we, we started to look into that. And I can remember uh, Dick Hart and Bob Barnhart and myself making uh, trips uh, oh, down to City Hall. How we found out about this particular piece of property that the, the China Light Club is on was uh, an offshoot of the, the railroad property, which we never did buy. And we're supposed um, to get into a deal with RCR, who's going to buy the full yeah. 11, sell us three, and uh, somehow that didn't work. They were going to have, a, they were going to have a two deals, and then the railroad didn't want two deals. They right. just wanted one deal. And uh, then you in, the on this in the process of go that all happening, uh, we uh, went to the city hall to uh, identify the tax uh, burden on, on these parcels. That was going to be something we had to know if we were going to get into this. And uh, in, in looking at that, we found that the city had the adjacent piece of property, and they didn't know whether they wanted to sell it or not. We made inquiries, and before we knew it, we bought it for $7,000, as I recall. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you actually uh, bought it from the city? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was delinquent. Uh, <coughs> and, and then we went in there and cleared it and uh, bought it. It was a shambles. Some. There was 150 piers and pilings underwater. Right. That was the biggest oh part of the, of the expenditure was the removal of all that material. There was apparently a dock back in the 20s docking area. Yeah. yeah of course, it was originally conce conceived as, as a club project, but then the No, I, I don't really think it was. It was no. always just a group of people that yeah, I don't we, we approached the club. We approached the, approached about the club and, area, and said if area anybody area wanted area. to, but I don't think it was actually a club There were a lot of people weren't interested in it. Yeah, they weren't interested. They, they did not want to get involved in this. They well, didn't just want to get a small... You know, the one purpose thing of the club was really to foster racing. Well, that's right. That was the decision is to keep it pure and to keep it in that framework. Sure. One thing I think when we first uh, formed the club, you know, we saw what what the other clubs had evolved to, you know, the people uh, um, didn't really get out there and race and they were kind of social clubs after a while and we said we don't want something like that. We want something that's strictly racing and we don't want to own any land or anything like that. Just have enough to put on the races at the end of the year we were supposed to be flat broke and start again, you know. And uh, that really was the concept of this club, not to own anything, just to, to serve the racing public only. Anybody that wanted to race. First trophy dinners. 
time. We used to get up and tell a funny story. I, we really missed yeah. the, the, I thought we yeah. could get into the, the GAF Awards. 1980. Yeah, yeah we got all those awards. Yeah. No, it was earlier than that. I think the first one must have been after the 77 season. I've got a, in this pile, I saw the results of the 1978 dinner where we had a tremendous turnout of 80 people. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it, it always it always was up around that. We could, even when we started out, we yeah. had, you know, like 35 we, we racers. We had those at the Yacht Club, was that? I think we the first, the yeah, club, yeah, I think the we first did. ones, and then it right. moved, yeah. moved around. Got too big to be at the Yacht Club. I remember Tommy used to give out about five awards. Remember crazy awards. I, I still got one home. I the bye bye yeah, award with the hand. We got lots of them. We got a number three. Uh, we got a green I don't know what the hell it is for. Yeah. We have the luck of the Irish award. Is that what it was? When Bob Erie was so excited because it looked like one summer there was going to be 100 boats racing. Bob, I remember that you would say we had 98 or we had 99. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when that was when we got 100? Oh. That's got to be about five or four years ago. Yeah. Probably well, more. The most we've had now is 128 one night. Wow. That are we're out on the course. Uh -huh. Is that the most we ever had about? I know. At one time on the course. Yeah. Mm. In comparison to now, was the weather stormier or windier or more severe or anything? It's like they're saying now we have a. I think there were a period. Oh yeah. I think there were a period of years. Oh, it was very uh, where it was, every really? time you went out, it was coming over the break. Really, so every time you went sailing, it was over the wall. Yeah. And in the in the uh, in the period of the late seventies and early eighties, it was always very windy in the yeah. summer. Right. You get a period, and you get a period of, as we said, uh, that by Fourth of July weekend that one year, where it blew for like four days. You mm -hmm. couldn't even leave the slip. Right. And and on Tuesday, you finally settled down enough. Tuesday, Wednesday, you could go out, actually go sailing, because it was it was so heavy. We don't see that kind of weather anymore. It was, it was relatively common to see green water coming over the break wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now they want to buy I think the weather was. Yeah. No, I, th I think. I think. I think. I don't think the, the winds have been as strong the last few years. Okay. Well, this year's the strongest I think we've had. Is it the last mm -hmm. few years? The only thing. The only difference is this year a lot of our wind was from the other direction. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know we had an east wind a lot this Do year. It? Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Do we have records of the winds for each race? No. no. It might be interesting to see how it... I can remember we were, uh, a lot of our members were involved in restoring the lighthouse, and we got to really know the Coast Guard guys real well, and they used to always grumble because the Wednesday night races, they'd go out and they'd have to follow the fleet around, and their guys are getting seasick and, because there was some terrible oh, weather yeah. situations, <laughs> I remember. Does the measuring of the boats go... Um, come along with the perp or did they come later? Is that where they had? Yeah, that, be, that, later. Was, that was driven yeah. by Lake Erie Perf. Uh, Steve yeah. Strong's group uh, dictated that, uh, that we measure the, the sails and, and, the, and the boats for, for that. Uh, Steve and was the early measurer and, and yeah. uh, ran all that. that Handicapping and measuring. And, <laughs> and then the club grew to a size where obviously I needed some help. Uh, in the spring it became too much to try to prepare your own boat and then run around. Yeah, and and measure at the same time, you know, the, the free time you have is typically the weekends and that, so. But yeah, that was driven by the person there. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't a significant uh, uh, point. I think uh, Gallagher was in and then so was Bill Tranchel for a while. Oh, could well be, yeah. you know. Because the club wasn't that big, so the, the same names of you know, appear all the time. Yeah, they appear. Um, you know, you, you did multiple things. Well, take a look at the list and see who's still members. You got a lot of them. Jonathan Anner. Uh, yeah. was, you had a list. Where was your, where's that? Yeah, that you one. had that one, the, the, the small one. Here, the 77 here. Yeah. Okay. Read that off. Right? Read that off. I don't know about an R. Adams. Jonathan Anner's still racing. Joe, you're around. Bob Barnhart, yeah. myself. Uh, Bobel. No. Dudley Buck is still racing, except yeah. he had a Cal 25. Bill, of course, died, but Art's still racing. Don Gallagher's gone. He's not racing with us anymore. Dave Hadley, is Dave Hadley still racing? No, no. no. He, he sold his boat, yeah. yeah. Okay. He was at the last, yeah. the last we got Johnson. Did he? Yeah. That's nice. And uh, Jerry. Kane's, I don't know, is he around anymore? Ron Kane? I don't think so. No. I don't know. Yeah, let's see. Charlie yeah. Nowak, is that the same guy that has Eagle? Yep. Yeah. Hank Smith. Mm -hmm. Bob Stoner came and went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul Weigel. 
Bill Tranchell died. So you still got about 50% of the people that were racing in 77 are still racing. Lynn Tranchell oh, yeah. then will still yeah, come yeah. out occasionally. So that's a pretty good, it's uh, a lot yeah. of longevity. That's right. It is. Well, one of the things that I uh, did as PR chairman this year was to write to the clubs around the area, in the, well, excuse me, not the clubs, the magazines uh, in the nation, and asked them if anybody knew of any club that brought over 100 boats to the starting line every Wednesday night. And no one at so far knows of anyone. I got a letter today that said Honolulu gets a lot of boats out on Wednesday night. And I'm gonna, gonna check that. But I, I just didn't know whether you all were aware of that fact because the, you know, you you have your Cleveland race week and Block Island and all that, but it's a very concentrated period of time. And this is a consistent thing that's going on. And the and I just want to do you realize what you guys started, and are you happy about it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, we're very proud of you. But. Does anyone um, know how the first Sportsman of the Year award of, was conceived and what the parameters were to start there? Mm -hmm. That was boat of the year? I mean, the boat of the year was not. I think of the that year. comes more into the, the Chuck to the show kind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think later on. Was there a boat of the year during your time? No. No, it was yeah, like the Probably in the 80s. The Sportsman of the Year award come from the yacht racing, U.S. Yacht Racing Association, and Hooper was instrumental in getting that because he got all their literature and he knew about that. And if I'm not mistaken, they donated the trophy or something to the right. different clubs. Club. But you had no, during your time, you had no big general award that you gave mm -hmm. right? Tom gave me an award once. <laughs> yeah. I got a trophy home in 1981. It says it's the Commodore's Award. Oh, oh really? See? Oh, yeah. there it is. Yeah, the only well, that was the first sportsman. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was another thing that, that made this club powerful was that we accommodated anybody. That's right. So long as you had a boat. The only requirement we had was it had to be somewhat of an offshore boat. We had to have a, a self bailing cockpit and a, and a means of propulsion. And other than that, yeah, it could. It it didn't have to fit any rules. No, that's right. You could come out. Well, last yeah, year, anybody. last year we had that fellow down from uh, the sail loft, North Sail Loft in uh, Toronto. Uh, German fella, forget what his name is. Yeah, and uh, he was talking to Joanne and I after the meeting, and he said, "I I do these things all over the yacht clubs all over the country." He said, "I never been at a place." where you discussed having your regatta, and everybody says, yep. He said, well, we're going to have that other one. He said, yep. <laughs> he said, normally they say, uh, we would like to have this. Does everybody, can we get enough people to agree on this? And they, well, what are you going to do to the parking? And uh, is that going to affect the restaurant? And he yeah. says, here, everybody just said, yeah, we're going to have it. That's it. We'll figure it out somehow when we get there. <laughs> he, he couldn't quite understand that. <laughs> But then yeah. he had to realize we don't own any club, That's we don't it. have any dinners. No <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. Why did you incorporate? That's what it I think it was to get the USIRA insurance. It was the big thing of because course. of our racing yeah. insurance. And they had a, a million dollar plus another million dollar umbrella. And it was, the insurance was very, very reasonable through the uh, USIRA. Which it, we still use, of course. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I think it was $200 a year or something, a very, very reasonable yeah. amount. Mm -hmm. But we had to, in order to get it, we had to incorporate it. That was probably the biggest reason. Yeah. So you're pleased with the direction of the club, with all these numbers? Or? Yeah, it's something that you can uh, get, you start out with a club where you knew everybody's name. I mean, you know a lot of people now anyway, but you, you just, it, you, uh, it, it seemed to be a lot more personal, and it, it, it's gotten to be this big thing. But you can still feel comfortable. So you're not you're not just a number. You can even find. I think it, it has evolved to the point where the club is like a collection of groups, not so much as like the, the like each little group is more like the club used to be, or the whole club used to be in 1976. You get all the the J24 racers get together, yeah. and the M3 fleet gets together, and so on. Each and, uh, fleet is more like the club, like was. the club used to be years ago. And I think yeah. that the flavor. Is there in a different way? It's like a series of clubs, small clubs all together, and that's what's nice about it. Kind of interesting. Well, one of the key keys to the success of the club, as you pointed out earlier, was the fact that if somebody has a good idea mm -hmm. and enough people want to do it, they go with it. And and because of that, 
there hasn't been the fragmentation that, that might otherwise right. occur. Um, yeah, something's preventing it, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to overanalyze it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep. exactly. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. That's the, a good club, point. The, club, the nucleus of the club, and you can look around here, not entirely, it was probably a bunch of pragmatic engineers. <laughs> 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 who looked at things that way, never mind the BS, this, you know, can you do it if you can't yeah. do it, let's just do it. Right. <laughs> that, that, may be. Very that was well very advanced. obvious in the, in the early going that right. uh, people just said, you know, let's do it, like, no, let's just do it. Let's, let's, what would happen if we did this, what if we did that? Well, this is closer to what we want, let's do it. And, just, and then even though it, was, it might have been obvious, we still voted to make sure that everybody was covered. And then if there were objections, we still talked about it. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. The course didn't wind up being at zero five zero. It wound up being at zero four zero instead. But it was still in the same direction. You know, it was like it was it was it was almost always a consensus. And we made it. I know. I can recall making a specific effort to just do what made the majority happy. We actually talked about that. Yeah. You, know, you can almost see now too that as the club grows now that some of the kids are coming in and they're becoming very active and we'll move into officer positions mm -hmm. and that and that uh, this could be something that will last forever you know it just keeps on going mm -hmm. i tell you that the, the, you know, the, the present board is really uh, very pleased that you guys decided to come here tonight i know the membership will be too because uh it's you're you're our history and uh, it's, it's fabulous to talk to you, I mean, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could tell you